Hello and welcome back to RimWorld at the start of a new series and I wanted to do this is going to be an episode zero and essentially what I wanted to do was go through all the mod list all the settings the scenario basically all the setup so in episode one I can jump right into the gameplay because I've tried to do this before and ended up just scrapping it because it takes so long that it's not worth doing at the beginning of a video especially not one that's supposed to be an introduction to a series so this is going to be set up and stuff, so if you're not interested in any of that, I suggest you skip this one and wait for the actual series to come out. But if you are interested, I want to give you basically, first of all, the premise of the series, why I've chosen the mods I have and how I'm expecting this to play out. And then secondly, I'll go through all the mods individually, I'll try and do it as succinctly as I can, but I do want to go through all of them and explain why they're there. And then I'll run through the mod settings to show what I've changed. So if you want to, you know, play along, do exactly how I do it, then by all means go ahead. And then we'll jump into actually setting up the colony, where on the planet we're going to be, all that kind of stuff. And we'll get into it. So what is the premise of this series? This series is called Utopia, and this is kind of an amalgam of several ideas I had. So one idea I had was that, well, first of all, I've been really enjoying the building side of RimWorld recently and making things look pretty. And I wanted to focus more on that rather than on difficulty this time. I've also, so the idea I had for that was like a prison architect style series where we'd build this really intricate, interesting prison. Uh, I also wanted to do something with mechanoids because there's a lot of cool mechanoid mods that I just haven't had a chance to play with much that I wanted to try and there's a few mods we'll go into them more but things like Dove's Bad Hygiene that I've heard really good things about and I've tried to use before but I've just never really gotten into them or had the time so that's what this series is the premise is that we're going to be controlling a group of androids and they're from a fallen empire prison ship or they were being transported to a prison world and they crash landed on the rim world and because they weren't fully programmed or because of some damage they took they don't really know anything they know they're supposed to protect humans and the best way to protect humans is to round them up so that you can keep an eye on them at all times and, you know, just try and meet their needs as best you can without them hurting one another. So that's kind of the idea, is we're going to be... I thought about using prison labor, but the new uh, ethical worker mechanic within ideology kind of makes that irrelevant, in my opinion. So we're just going to be, you know, convincing them to be ethical workers. And... We're using semi-random research, but we're going to have a very high research speed, and we're starting with no research because our, you know, our androids took a bonk to the head and they don't remember anything, but they can learn very quickly. They just need some direction. So when our human ethical workers ask us for things, we'll look into it and we'll see what we can do for them. That's the idea. And the reason I'm starting with no research is... Uh, I, I did a trial run of this just in my own time just to see how it plays and whether it's you know whether it's actually a functional idea and it's okay but the default start with the mechanoid scenario or not mechanoid android scenario just gives you so much research and I find it really overwhelming I prefer to do it kind of step by step and let things grow organically and that's really what I'm looking for here is a big sprawling quote-unquote prison with uh we have some mods which make it more likely that our people will rebel and that they have that they need recreation because usually ethical workers don't need recreation and stuff like that and also um i was gonna do it with a fluid ideology so that we could kind of develop the ideology to what our people are asking for i thought that would be cool but it turns out androids, if all you have is androids, they don't have an ideology. They don't believe in, they can't follow an ideology. At least the basic ones can't. 
I'm assuming the more advanced androids can. Um, so even though I created an idea religion, once we got enough people, their idea religions took over, which actually I like more because I, I didn't want to convert people. I wanted all the different idea religions and us to have to cater to their like individual needs. I thought that would be fun. So that's kind of the, the overview. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And in terms of the series, I'm going to try and be a little more, just a little more roleplay with it, because that's something I really enjoy and something that I've tried to incorporate into my videos and just haven't really had the confidence for it. And at this point, I think I'm ready. So that's what we're going with. And we'll get into that a little bit more when, you know, we get into the scenario and the setup. But first of all, let me take a quick sip of water here, because this is going to be uh, quite taxing for me. <laughs> OK. All right, let's do it. So we have Harmony, obviously. All other mods, more or less, 90% of the other mods need Harmony. Same with Hugslip. All of this is generic stuff. Higher quality textures. So something that I did want to experiment with that I've avoided before, mostly for performance reasons, is textures. So a lot of upscaling uh, facial animations, they're all in here. So high quality textures, guess what gives you high quality textures? Vanilla expanded framework. We don't have many vanilla expanded mods in here. I purposefully avoided them because I use them a lot. So I'm only using a couple that either I like a lot or that I need for certain aspects of the scenario or ones that I don't use much at all. And then I found other mods to kind of fill in the hole that Vanilla Expanded would not normally fill. So yeah, we just, uh, this is just this patches for ideology and royalty. I threw these in along with, um, a couple of other things from Vanilla Expanded that I'm not sure I really needed, but I wanted to be safer rather than sorry. We have fishing so that our people can do fishing. Some of them will like fishing and it's just, it's a good way to get food without letting them wander around too much. Vanilla Weapons Expanded, I put in here purely because you get the tools. We also have simple sidearms, so we can equip our ethical workers with tools and they'll be able to use those as they go around. Uh, I also added the non-lethal weapons uh, expansion, which I don't normally use, uh, but you get like tear gas and stun guns and rubber bullets. Obviously, as we're a prison and we're trying to take people, you know, non-lethally, uh, we needed some kind of non-lethal weapon to be able to do that. Plus some ritual framework, some of the other stuff depends on that. Same with XML extensions, humanoid alien races, again, a framework for the androids. Dubs mint menus, because I think they look a lot nicer than the default menus. Uh, more upscaled textures. Uh, we have a whole suite of these AI upscaled. And from what I've seen, they're pretty nice. They're not incredible. And, you know, it even says in here they're not supposed to be like artist level quality but it's it's a nice upgrade especially on the on the pawns themselves they look a lot crisper and that's really nice mod manager is this lets me manage my mods tabula rasa is the new name for o21 toolbox we have some o21 mods here so we need that facial animation as i said adds facial animations i haven't used it before I'm very excited for it. It is a nice little thing. I think it depends a lot on the, like with the default characters, I don't think it looks great, but with some of the updated faces, it is quite nice. Uh, enable oversized weapons we needed for the androids. And I don't know, it's just kind of funny. They, the bigger weapons look bigger on them. More precepts and memes, sure, more precepts plus plus. These I just threw in. I didn't really have an idea for them, but there didn't seem to be a reason not to have them. HD porn rendering, again, just makes them look better, and this one's really nice. Interaction bubbles, because I like seeing what they're saying to each other without having to go into the social tab. More precepts, again, just more options. 
there wasn't a specific idea behind those. More trait slots, because I use Rational Romance, I like to be able to give people an extra slot just to kind of fill in for that. And there's Rational Romance, which gives everyone a sexuality, and you can tamper with, you know, how often they hook up and things like that. HD Pawns, again, makes them look a little sharper. Um, I don't know if those two clash, uh, the one that I had up here, but HD Pawn Rendering. No, it doesn't. I remember. HD Pawn Rendering? Yeah, it says here. Just increases the resolution that they can be rendered at. This actually gives a texture for it. There you go. Uh, so vanilla beards. Like I said, nothing crazy here. I'm just trying out some stuff to see what it looks like. Oh, and I threw in Celestials, because this was another mod I've been meaning to try. This is like the lightweight immortality version. And you'll randomly get immortals. They'll come back to life after a certain amount of time. And, and that's kind of it with this one. It's not like the um, Immortals mod where they can power up and they get extra things. This literally just means they'll come back to life. Is my understanding. The allow tool, because obviously Android tiers, we needed this for the Android tiers, which is going to be a big focus of this mod. This mod is huge. It adds so much. I know very little about it. I tried looking into it when I was doing the testing. I just, I have no idea. This is going to be hilarious to play with, but we'll have to see. Auto Cut Blight. It, it does what it says. Fallouts, again, with the bubbles, just adds little amusing things they'll say. Callouts Extended adds more of them. Character Editor lets you edit characters. I'm making custom characters for this one, so obviously you need this. Camera Plus just lets you do more with your camera. I like it because it lets you zoom out more and in more. And that's that's kind of it, really. Clean pathfinding is nice because it makes them walk on paths you build, or makes it so they're more likely to walk on paths. It just it looks a little nicer. Compact heat ifs again in the health tab condenses everything down, makes it a little bit clearer. Compress raid again, mostly for performance. Just make sure the raids don't get too big, so you don't end up running at like two FPS when some like something happens. Designator shapes just makes it easier to build interesting shapes. Uh, rarity colors for traits. I just, I like having them different colors. I don't really mind how they're colored. I just, I find it nicer to look at when they have colors. Okay, dead conserve. We had this in the last mod pack and didn't use it. And so I do want to do it this time. And my logic here is that we're androids, right? We don't have feelings or emotions. If a human's dead, why shouldn't they be, you know, why shouldn't their body, body, body go towards helping out the rest of the humans? That makes sense to me. Speak up, again, is part of the, um, the bubbles. It lets them, just more things that they can say to each other. Drag select is really nice. It just lets you drag select certain things so you don't have to click 10,000 times. Don't block the door stops them blocking doors. Again, really nice. A lot of colonies have died because someone held a door open that shouldn't have been open. Rimmerfeller I added. Again, another mod that I intend to play with a lot and just end up not using. Uh, Dub's Break mod is really nice. It just changed the way um, mental breaks are triggered. So if they're only mildly upset, they'll get milder breaks, and if they're more upset, they'll get the more extreme ones. We have the Ritual tab, which puts all the Ritual stuff in under one tab, which is really nice. I prefer it that way. I think it should be vanilla, personally, but that's just me. Rim HUD gives you more information in the HUD, which it feels weird saying that. HUD? Rim HUD. Yeah, it just, again, should be vanilla, fantastic mod. Everybody gets one, just gives you more options when you're crafting things, you can say, make one for everyone. Smarter deconstruction on mining for me is invaluable at this point because the amount of times someone has gotten injured because a roof collapsed on them because they don't take the roofs off when they're deconstructing walls is really frustrating. Smart speed just adds the ultra speed and 
uh, lets you choose uh, how fast your game moves when events are happening. Room reality just kind of rebalances mood things. So, for example, someone dying will impact them a lot for a long time, but a small thing like, say, eating without a table will only impact them a little for a little amount of time. It just kind of balances those out a little. Smarter construction, so they don't seal themselves inside walls. Sometimes they still do, but it's better. Smart farming I haven't used before, but I know you can use it to... Well, to farm smarter. Like, they won't plant if there's only two days of the growing season left, or there's a cold snap or something. Or they'll try and um, harvest things if, you know, there's a toxic fallout or something. So, on paper, it's very helpful. I've never tried it, and when I've seen people use it, it's been kind of hit and miss. But we'll see. Uh, that's the idea of this, is to test, you know, new mods that I don't normally use. Show Drafty's weapon. Shows the weapon on the taskbar. is very helpful. I probably won't play without this mod ever again, because it's much easier than going through everyone's inventory to work out what they're carrying. Simple sidearms lets them carry more than one weapon at a time. So you can give everyone like a ranged weapon and a melee weapon, and when they get close enough to be in melee, they'll you know, they'll swap to their melee weapon. It makes sense, right? Unlimited just uncaps some of the base game limitations on things like I don't know, say work speed. So you can actually get higher than the caps. And I don't know, I have mixed feelings on this one. But it, it seems like if you're going to be put investing into bionics, especially if you have mods where there's even more powerful things, I feel like you should be able to reap some reward out of that, you know? Uh, you Got Me just makes it so that when pawns are social fighting, they'll stop if they get too badly hurt, instead of ripping each other's legs off. Share the Load means multiple people can bring ingredients to uh, construction. And Dove's Bad Hygiene, a mod that I think is fantastic. I've seen a lot of people use it. I've tried to use it myself and just never really got into it. There's a lot to this mod. And this was one of the reasons that I didn't want to start with research, because I think this is the kind of thing I need to build up to. I think if I just start with all the options, my head will just explode. Semi-random research I really like, obviously gives you random research options. Fahrenheit and Celsius just shows Fahrenheit and Celsius. Self-dying I'm very excited about. I've been searching for this mod for forever. It lets pawns uh, dye their own clothing. So I don't have to worry about it, but I can still make them look like the Power Rangers. And that's going to be good for me. Search and destroy, we've used before. Just lets you tell them to go kill whatever's in the area. Rimatonics like Rimafella, just a big mod, really useful. I've never really had a chance to play with it, so I'm excited to. We have Phil Vanishes with Rain and Time. It, again, does, does what it says. Complex jobs, just breaks the jobs down a little more in the work tab, so it's easier to tell people what to do. Rim saves, just helps you organize your saves. It's good for me for separating my personal games with my YouTube games. Remove real religions, because I find it really uncomfortable using real religious themes and stuff in this game about skinning people and turning them into hats, personally. In screen is for me, for like thumbnails and stuff if I need to. Gunplay adds some animations and sounds for certain weapons, and also like weapon trails. I put it in basically every mod pack, and it feels weird not having it. It does do some other things, like there are custom sounds and um, animations that you can enable. I usually turn those off, I just like the the general stuff. Replace stuff lets you replace stuff without deconstructing it, it's quite nice. 
Job in bar, puts the job in the bar. I know, incredible. Realistic rooms rewritten. I really like this mod. I know some people think it makes the game too easy, but the room sizings in vanilla are ridiculous. Like, you need such a big room for them to be even marginally impressed. And so I like, especially for a playthrough like this, I like being able to scale it down a little. You know, get a little smaller with my rooms. Quality colors gives quality colors. Again, just easier to look at. I prefer it like this. Quality Builder lets you assign a quality that you're aiming for, and if they don't get it, they'll demolish something and try again. It's nice. You can do this in vanilla just manually, but it's a lot more tedious, and this is just a nice way to do it, especially in the later game when, you know, you don't want a normal bed. You want at least an excellent, or if you're going for, like, a masterwork or legendary piece of furniture. Deep storage... We don't have Ogre Stack or anything like that this time. So there's going to be a lot of st small stacks of things. And I really liked this in our last playthrough of just ways to store items. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to explore this one more. I haven't done the simple storage add-on this time, I don't think. So because that added a lot of stuff, but I really wanted to use this more and see what it can do. Map reroll, just. I have a pretty strong idea of what I want for a map, so this is just gonna help me get it a little quicker. More colors means there's more colors in the game that, like, you know, their favorite color can be any of these now. So, along with the self dying, I'm excited to see them all in their favorite colors. Malloy traits, I have a couple of traits mods in here, just different from the ones that I would normally use, just to. Like I said, give a bit of variety, see what, you know, see what's out there. Pick up and haul, it's pretty obvious. They, you know, they'll pick things up and haul it. Pretty nice. Research pal forked just makes the research tree a little easier to look at. And it has an option that integrates well with semi-random research, so I didn't bother changing this one out for a different one. E-music adds amazing music that fits really well. Uh, Storyteller is enhanced. This adds, I guess, technically four new storytellers, or is it only three? I forget. Uh, we'll look at these when we're setting up the game, uh, but I like the sound of them. I don't know exactly how they work, but they're a little bit different, and I, I appreciate that. Map preview, again, gonna help us pick the map that we want. Metal don't burn, because metal shouldn't burn optimization meats just instead of every animal dropping its own meat everything drops either meat insect meat or human meat i i it makes sense to me like there's there's no difference between any of these except the name so it, it's so much easier to just combine them time kills i love this mod some people hate it when pawns get old they'll get They'll start degrading and getting health conditions and eventually die from old age. No job authors lets anyone work on any unfinished uh, project. I, I, I find it really nice. Because one of the things I find really annoying is the pawns leaving unfinished projects lying around, and this helps stop that. Ticks per second, shows your ticks per second, just helps me gauging, you know, performance stuff. Traits Plus, again, adds a bunch of backstories, adds a bunch of traits. Again, just adding adding more stuff. Trade Helper gives you a better trade window. I really enjoyed it in our last playthrough. I'm going to keep using it. No debris. Sometimes you get these weird debris particles that aren't dirty. They're just there, and it looks kind of trashy, so this takes those away. No default shelf storage means that when you build a shelf it doesn't have default storage so they don't immediately throw a bunch of junk on it. Zen Garden I'm excited to use. It just adds basically what you can see here. There's just like some bushes and some nice walkways and water. The gravel with that people can rake. Like the raked gravel and it adds like cherry blossom trees and stuff. 
it's just really pretty and I'm excited to build a little courtyard area using this for our, you know, our who-mans that we're keeping locked up, trying to keep them calm and zen. Names galore, adds a bunch more names, gives a bit more variety in the pawns, which I appreciate. More planning, lets you have different colored plans, which makes it easier to do, you know, complex planning. More ideological words, you know, adds more ideological words. What, what do you want from me? Stockpile limit is fun. It's something that I keep meaning to use. Basically, you can set a limit on how much of a thing they can put in. So, for example, you could put, like, herbal medicine in your prison and then set the limit to, like, 10 and keep the rest in your fridge so it doesn't deteriorate and they don't just put, like, 300 in your prison. There's a lot of uses for this. I'm going to be doing a lot with stockpiles and zones in this playthrough, I think, so... This will be helpful. Mass Graves is just a nice way of dealing with bodies in the early game instead of digging hundreds and hundreds of graves. Yeo's animation. I haven't used this in the past because I wasn't really sure if I liked the animations, but I thought if I was going to try it, this was the place to do it. So we have it installed, and I have to say, actually playing with it so far, it does look... it looks nicer than I thought it would. And then Yeo's 3 combat or yeos combat 3 it's it changes the way damage calculation works i prefer it over vanilla and it makes sense to me i know some people prefer like combat extended but i i don't think i would ever play without yeos combat i did consider leaving it out of this pack but ultimately i like it too much who's next just let you spin between items or people or animals easier. While you're up, pick up and haul just allows opportunistic hauling. It's it's real handy. What's that mod? Tells you what mod thing's from. That's also real handy. What's missing? Tells you what's missing from recipes. It's really helpful. I like the color coordinating as well. Visible raid points. Again, a lot of these do just what they tell you. They're very simple, small mods. This tells you how many points were used in your raid. So you can kind of get a bearing on, you know, how bad or how well you're doing. Or how dire the raids are getting. Uh, mood bar color. Colors in the mood bar makes it easier to see what people's moods are like. Dress patients. It says dress patients, but you can dress anyone in a bed. So... If you have a prisoner who's naked and we want to give them clothes because we're good, decent robots looking after the humans, we can do that. Prisoner recreation means that prisoners need recreation, so we have to look after them. Uh, you know, ethical worker recreation is the same, but for ethical workers. And we've got the ethical worker rebellions improved. Now, I looked into this and I did tweak the settings so that rebellions are more likely and basically uh, I increased how high the suppression you have to keep them at so that they won't rebel and as we're going to be giving them actual clothes and not you know straps and collars because I don't think humans like that so much well some humans like that but in this situation they're not going to like that very much um so rebellion should happen, and when rebellions happen, there's a chance that ethical workers will inspire other ethical workers to join the rebellion. Wall light, and it's wall lights, I think it's amazing. It's going to be in every pack, and no one can stop me. And then we have the VGP, which is the Vegetable Garden Project uh, suite, more or less. We don't have all the mods that they produce, but we have the big ones, in my opinion. We have Vegetable Garden which is going to be our, basically our vanilla expanded plants replacement. It adds a bunch of flowers and all, you know, things that you can grow. We got more veggies, so we have even more things we can grow. We have garden fabrics. This actually adds a chain. So instead of just harvesting cotton for cloth, you have to actually put it through a spinning wheel or tailor uh, loom, I think. Um... I was considering adding simple chains, but when I saw this had kind of a supply chain to it, I thought I'd try this out first. 
We have the garden resources if we need them. We have garden tools, which adds a bunch of kind of interesting things that help you with growing. So excited to try those out. Recipe icons gives your recipes icons. I know, incredible. Bionic icons gives, get this, your bionics icons. Uh, better vanilla masking just, as you can see here, just improves how some of the vanilla textures look. Vanilla hair retextured improves how the vanilla hair textures look. Gradient hair gives gradient hair. They can have two colors in their hair. Graying hair makes it so that their hair color fades over time to gray. And I'm curious if this works with gradient hair. I'm hoping it does. But we'll see. And then upscale textures. Upscale textures. Retextured apparel. Retextured sculptures. Colorblind minerals just makes it easier to see them. And I prefer this over the default. Completely clueless. This is the one which lets us start with no research. Color deep resources. So when we're using the deep mineral scanner, the the patches are shaded so we know what they are without having to mouse over them. Then just some performance stuff, runtime GC, performance optimizer, and rocket man. Then right at the bottom we have doormats. I added this as a last minute thing because I forgot about it. This is another one that I keep meaning to use but never do. And I was reading in the mod description that it seems like a performance optimizer might cause issue with it so that it doesn't work properly. It was suggested that maybe putting it below performance apt performance optimizer might help but we'll have to see it might not work if it doesn't it's not that big of a deal but i wanted to try it and that's all the mods wow okay let's quickly run through some of the settings i've changed and then we'll get into creating our settlement okay so in the mod settings I'm going to try and remember what the major ones I changed were. I'm not going to go through every single one because th that was pretty rough getting through that mod list, let me tell you. Uh, so Android's going to use hospital beds. See, this is the thing. I, I don't know enough about this mod. I don't know what most of this stuff does. Um, change tier one research to be industrial instead of spacer. That's something I want because we have no research. Give me that. And then Androids can rust, automatically paint, blah blah blah. There was something I changed here. Uh yeah, do not remove all passions from tier one and tier two. Because we're starting with those, I wanted them to have passions. And I've kind of come up with a story around the Androids about why they have those. Ah, here it is. Make androids rare for other faction. Warning will remove all android factions. So we don't have other android factions, and it's very rare that androids will turn up in other factions, which is fine. I didn't really want... I want us to build our own androids instead of finding them out in the world. Uh, celestials... I left at 1%, but I shortened the resurrection time to about, what is this? So 60,000 is one day. So I did about a sixth of that. So like between four to six hours, basically. After they die, they should come back if they're celestial. And I did that because if we're, you know, chopping up the bodies and using them for things, I didn't want to do that only for it to be a Celestial two days later. Um, all of this, so Compress Raids, I didn't really change anything here, I just changed the max raid number to 75. And my reasoning for that is, assuming I go up to like 20 pawns at max, maybe 25, that's 100 on screen in total. And that's that usually gets me down to somewhere between 100 to 200 TPS, depending upon you know, what they are and what they're doing. So to me, that's acceptable during a raid. I don't really like going much above that. 
Uh, Tomer Mats. I haven't actually looked at this one. This is just the strength of the slowdown. I'm not going to mess with that. Hey, okay, that was bad hygiene. So... The important thing here is that our androids don't need to wash, they don't need to pee, they don't need to drink. All the humans do. But I didn't make it so that their rate is a little lower, so they have to do it less often. But they do have to do all three, and those are needs that we're gonna have to meet. And they're gonna bring water with them when they're traveling around, just so they don't have to keep running to a water source. Though I might... I might turn that off later. We'll see. Uh, none of these I've messed with, really. Uh, gradient hair, I just made it happen more often because I think it looks cool and I like to see it. Also, for some reason, it's a really... It's like a 2% chance on males in its default settings. And I don't think that's fair. I like to see that. So, gunplay, like I said, I... And I... I stop the sounds because I don't really like the sounds it adds, but I do like the trails and the animations. More trait slots. I've gone for three to five. I normally have it higher than this, but I've noticed it get, gets a little annoying when they have like seven or eight traits, so I've bumped it down a little just to see how I feel about that. Rational Romance. I normally just leave this as it is, but I did tweak it a little so that the balance of sexualities is a little more rounded. It's normally, I think, 50 or 60 bisexual, and then maybe like 20 or 15 each for gay or straight. I just, I balanced it out a little. Not for any particular reason, I just wanted to. Uh, in Research Pal, uh, you want to take this if you're using semi-random research. Uh, because otherwise you don't get a notification when they finish researching something. Simple sidearms, I've set so that... Um, where's the best way to show it? So basically, they can have... They can carry a couple of weapons, but mainly only lighter weapons. So if we get someone with a big, like, minigun or whatever, that's the only thing they can use. It's only... They can't use that and, like, I don't know, a, a plasma sword or something. So, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but just understand that they can carry more than one weapon, but over a certain weight, they they can't. Only certain weapons can be sidearms. So the Slave Rebellion's improved. As you can see, I bumped it up. So, minimum suppression to disable rebelling. So... Above 80%, they won't rebel. And then loyalty suppression... Uh, I don't really understand how all these works. My understanding is, is that if they're over 95% suppression, they won't, they won't join a rebellion even if other pawns are encouraging them to. And unless we keep them above 80 there'll be a chance. So by default, this is like 70, 70, or 65 or 70. And I've pushed it up, and I might push it up even higher. The idea being that unless we're right on top of them all the time, there's always a chance they could rebel. Which is what I'm after with this series. I want them to try and escape, and I want to, you know, those stories to come about. Because how do we deal with, you know, who mans who do not wish to be protected and kept in their good lives that we have created for them. Uh, none of this I've changed, I don't think. Uh, wall light. I increased the radius because I don't like having to build lights every three feet, which some people might say is overpowered, but I fight me. And then, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I guess... No, I didn't I didn't actually change any of the combat stuff this time. The only thing I did with combat and animation, they both add a weapon spin animation, and for some reason it really distracts me. So I turned that off. I think that's the only thing I did. All right, that's it. Let's actually get into making our colony.
Okay, so we're going to go to New Colony, and I've already set up a scenario for this. It's called Utopia, because obviously we're in a Utopia. And let's go to our new storytellers. So we have Callista Complex. Very, creates events on a more complex schedule. She likes to see how you can handle different situations. Expect the unexpected. I think this is the one I'm going to go for, at least up front. I like the... It's a very enticing intro. It doesn't actually tell us how she works, which, I mean, none of them do, right? But yeah, that's interesting. We have Raya Relaxed. Um, basically, Phoebe Chillax, but with a couple of extra events thrown in. But more often than not, they're going to be a, a nice little thing or perhaps a threat. But most of the time, something nice. And then we have Matt Moody, who does sound interesting, but I think I want to try this on a more challenge-focused playthrough. So he's famous for his mood swings. You could have a good time with balanced events, but occasionally when he gets in a mood, he makes your life a living hell. Which, I don't know, kind of sounds like Cassandra, but occasionally will have some randy mood swings and just throw a bunch of stuff at you. And then we have Nora Nothing... Which, as far as I can tell, literally does nothing. And I like this, that it says you can write your own story, so, you know, if you just want to play like a pure colony builder, I guess. Or a slightly different challenge in remote regions, which would be interesting for like a sea ice playthrough, because those typically rely on you, you know, getting raided and eating the raiders to survive. But if you never get raided, how do you then do it? I think that... I don't know if that's something I could do, but I think that is an interesting idea for a playthrough. Okay, so we're going to start on Callista Complex, and we're going to do Adventure Story, at least to start with. Oh, it's also worth noting we're not going to use them right now, but this also adds extra difficulties. So we have Murderous, which, you know, very extreme, but... Uh, which is fine, but these two sound really cool. So post-apocalyptic, hardest trying to find water in the desert. The main challenge comes from very few resources combined with a large number of enemies who try to steal the last bit of food you could harvest from the destroyed and polluted world. For those who want an alternative challenge to just raid size, this is a challenge of you versus the world. I'm not quite sure how that translates to gameplay, but that sounds really interesting. And then this spoiled life. I considered using this difficulty, but after looking at what it actually does, I didn't want to. Um, but we might switch to it later. Pawns are spoiled from Glitter World Life. They have less motivation to work, need more recreation time, and are harder to keep happy. For those who want an alternative challenge to just raid side, this is a true challenge of you versus your colonists. So yeah, it gives them a minus 20 debuff constantly. They need more recreation and less work speed. It Honestly, it sounds like hell. It would fit for this playthrough, but I don't know. Should I do it? They're going to be breaking down all the time is my concern. But isn't that kind of the point? All right, I've, I've talked myself into it. We're going to try it. And I'm also going to... Actually, let's do it like this. Um, let me put this on while I remember. So we're going to set it to spoil life. So 125, what is Adventure Story? Oh, it's only 60%. Ah, okay, so it's between Blood and Dust and Strive to Survive. But yeah, the mini, minus 20 colony mood is pretty awful. The food poison chance is... Ugh. I was trying to see what else has changed. Um, yeah, less yield... I thought it changed, changed some other stuff, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay, yeah, I think I know what I want to do. So we're actually going to set it to Adventure Story. But we're going to bump this up to about 80. Ugh. All right, 82%. And we're going to drag this all the way down to... Let's do minus 15 Put this back up to a hundred. 
close enough this back up to 100. I want to put all these back up to 100, basically. I think that one can stay there. These are all fine. Um, enemy death on down. Let's drop that to a 50-50, just so we get a few extra people. This we can bump up a little. That we can bump up. I think I like that. The only thing I'm going to do is, like I said, we want really fast research. We are going to get fast research from our... Well, I say from our ideologian, but I didn't actually check if our robots get the benefits of our ideologian. But it's not listed on them. Hmm. Let's just do that. 200% should be enough to get through fairly quickly. Okay, well, I've already changed from what my initial idea was, so good for me, I guess. Uh, what should our seed be? I mean, Utopia, right? I don't like just doing... That seems kind of obvious. Let's do Utopia. <laughs> All the difference in the world. Um, now, do I want the Empire? I think, yeah, I think we want all of these. And this is our world. I don't. That's a lot of desert. Like I said, I did have an idea in mind. Let me just... I want a slightly bigger map. I was thinking about playing on a really big map. But I, I wanted to test it before I actually played with it, and I didn't really get enough time. So we're just going to go for this one. This should be fine. Right, now where in the world are we... Okay, so this is cold. Now what I want, preferably, is a stream with at least some hills in a, if not all year round growing temperature, at least most of the year round. Right down here, this looks promising. Caves is a little worrying. Uh, maybe this? Ooh. Okay, that looks like it has potential. Does also have caves, but it's just one down here. I should turn off cave generation. I really don't like them. Oh. Oh, hello. Mountainous Creek. Now slate granite and limestone. I prefer to only have two types of rock, but... I think we take this one and we re-roll it. Because I want better fertile fields, but this is... Yeah, this is the kind of thing I was going for. So I'm going to load... Uh, I'll do it this way. But I'm going to load my ideologian that I made. Uh, here we go. It's fine. I just added in... Uh, what's it called? Uh, doormat. So that was the only difference there. So this was the ideologian I came up with, which we start with just guilty and you know, we have the very fast research. Uh, I don't remember making pain a good thing, but okay. Uh, maybe that was, yeah, that's from guilty. Okay. But obviously we're androids. We don't feel pain, so it didn't really matter. And then charity is essential. Obviously, we're going to try and help as many people as we can. If it even matters, because that's the thing. Uh, we have the relic of motivation here and our trusty iPad. And these are high stellar. No, I hate that you can't save these names. And I'm just changing this on the off chance that it does actually affect our people. Or we get enough people of our ideology for it to matter. Yeah, so we have our warden, we have an ethics director, our social festival is a team meeting and an SOS signal. Both of these have a chance of a random recruit. So a chance that, you know, someone will come to us and ask for help. But again, I don't think this matters. And then I already created our initial people, so give me a moment and I'll load them up. 
Okay, I don't know how I managed to do it, but somehow my main droid got a beautiful head of hair and a new paint job since the last time I loaded this up, so that's interesting. Uh, so the admin droid, the one in charge of the colony, is more commonly known as Weirdfish, which is going to be our colony leader, and the one that I will be, you know, talking through. If we're good at social, they're very smart, mainly because they were... You know, their task on the prison world was to interface with the inmates and, you know, record data, analyze trends, that kind of thing. So, that kind of fits, I think. Uh, I don't know where these passions came from. They don't really matter. They're not going to be doing either of these. They're incapable of violent, because obviously, why would an admin droid need to be violent? They're a fast learner, they're charismatic, as robots go, and they're a go-getter. Uh, they are the motivation behind this settlement. Then we have two guard droids, uh, known as Buster and Atreus. One of them's real good at shooting and real happy to be shooting. And the other is a brawler, who can also shoot if we need them to. Uh, they don't do dumb labor, they don't do social. They're the muscle and riot control, basically. Uh, fast walker, tough. Also, we have authorita authoritarian, um, which doesn't actually do much because he's incapable of social, but it sounds good for a guard, right? And again, tough, great memory. They have great memories because they're robots. Then we have Giles, our maintenance droid, who is the colony engineer. Uh, rolled up sleeves, just gives a whole bunch of bonuses, like Summer. He's clever, fast walker, kind, basically the, the handyman. Um, he's going to be in charge of, he's good at building, but also, you know, crafting, animals, also a decent shooter, just a handy droid to have around. And then we have Vic, the, the chef droid, who obviously is going to be, you know, cooking the meals as well as looking after any plants and animals we end up with. Uh, he's a backpacker, jogger, sanguine fisherman, gourmand. I actually didn't have to change much about him. He rolled most of these traits uh, just naturally, which was pretty incredible. So yeah, that's going to be our team. And let's jump right into it. For some reason, it doesn't start you on the map. You have to zoom in, but that's fine. So let's have a look. I just want to see them land. Yeah, there they all are. I did give us some android pods, because we're not going to get the research for them for a while. Actually, we can't power them. Hmm. Okay, well, we have them, and any time we get power... Uh... <laughs> yeah, when we get power, we'll, we'll deal with that. Alright, so let's do our reroll. And see if we can find something... Do something like that. I want the fertile soil. And you can see, like, if we have a holding cell here, and then we can easily wall off, and then we have this whole area to keep the, our, um, our people in. Let's... Actually, let's favorite a couple of these. And then we'll choose from those. Let me just run through real quick. Okay, so I look through a couple of pages worth here, and I got some good options. Um, this one I like because the entire river almost is in the mountains, so we don't have to worry about walling off the river. We can just wall off like through these cliffs and up here, and then in theory we'd have this whole big central area and the mountain to work with. So that's definitely a possibility. I also like the big patches of farmland here. And like also, again, very easy wall-offs. Um, this one doesn't really have the farmland. It has this very convenient interior area, but the lack of fertile soil is probably a no. Let's get rid of that one. This one, again, I was thinking like this kind of strip idea. Just kind of cool, but I don't think that's really what I'm after. This one... I mean, maybe... 
I think that's a maybe. This one... We would have to wall off the river, but otherwise very defensible. Not great farmland either, though. Okay, so between these three... I think I have to go for this one. I think this is the map. Like, farms here, little farms here. There's going to be a lot of growing in this, because we couldn't grow it all in our last one. Like, we build our entryway here. Maybe our robot area up here, and then the rest of this for the prison? Something like that? Sure. Let's generate this one. Just have a quick look, just to make sure it's everything we thought it would be. Yeah, actually seeing it like this, I'm a big fan. I like this a lot. And then even if somehow a raid does spawn, like here, they have to walk up this super narrow way. Or if our prisoners want to escape, they have to run down here. And Oh, that'd be... That's actually a really cool idea if they have to, like, um, Shawshank Redemption out of here. I'm a big fan. Those are some really nice geysers as well. Yeah, keep it. This is mine. All right. Well, this has been the setup. Everything's ready to go. I'm going to do some planning and set up, you know, some basic schedules and stuff. And the first episode will be jumping right in. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, please do leave them down below. And I hope you'll enjoy the series. Bye. -bye.